Hello, my name is Jesse Colombo, and in this presentation, I'm going to be discussing why silver investors should pay close attention to copper. First, a little bit about me. I'm an independent precious metals analyst, investor, and newsletter writer. I'm also a popular financial media personality who became known for warning about the 2008 global financial crisis as a university student. And I'm a skeptic of mainstream financial markets and an advocate for free markets and sound money. I just want to emphasize the importance of paying attention to correlations between assets. Most people are intuitively aware that gold and silver have a strong correlation with each other. And the facts back this up. They have a correlation coefficient of 0.771 out of 1 over the past 5 years and an even higher 0.917 over the past year. What's particularly striking, however, is the strong correlation between copper and silver, 0.725 over the past five years, and an impressive 0.878 over the past year. This strong correlation is a compelling reason for silver investors to monitor copper as closely as they do gold. The strong price relationship between silver and copper is clearly reflected in the long-term charts of the silver to copper ratio, which has remained remarkably consistent over time despite periodic fluctuations around the average of approximately six. The close relationship between silver and copper can be attributed to factors influencing both supply and demand. From a supply standpoint, silver is seldom mined on its own. Instead, it is typically a byproduct of copper and other metal mining such as lead, zinc, and gold. On the demand side, both silver and copper have substantial industrial applications, driving significant industrial demand for both metals. While silver is often associated with gold, it differs significantly in its demand profile. The majority of silver demand, or 51%, comes from industrial use compared to just 18% from investment. In addition, Rapid growth in industrial demand for silver likely explains the rising correlation between silver and copper in recent years. In contrast, gold demand is largely fueled by investment, which accounts for 45% of demand, and jewelry, which accounts for 49% of demand, with much of that jewelry also serving as a form of investment, especially in developing countries like India and China. Both copper and silver are far more sensitive to the economic cycle compared to gold. For example, on the verge of a recession, both copper and silver prices tend to decline in anticipation of reduced industrial demand. Conversely, when the economic cycle is on an upswing, both copper and silver prices typically rise in anticipation of increased industrial demand. Gold, by contrast, is traditionally viewed as a safe haven asset that investors turn to during times of crisis. The strong price relationship between silver and copper is likely amplified by trading algorithms that predict movements in one metal based on the price of the other, often creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. For example, when copper begins to rally, certain algorithms will buy silver so that both metals rally together. Although it's anecdotal, I've often observed silver track copper even more closely than gold, both on intraday movements and over longer time frames. For instance, I've often seen silver rise with copper while gold stayed flat or declined. Other times I've observed silver dropping along with copper even as gold rallied. I'll show a recent example of this phenomenon using the charts in the next few slides. To start, let's take a look at the chart of gold. As you can see, gold surged by $860 or nearly 50% in the past year. Like gold, copper experienced a strong rally, but it peaked on May 20th and quickly reversed, wiping out most of its spring gains, unlike gold, which continued to rise. Copper bottomed on August 8th and has rebounded since then. Finally, we come to silver, which, like gold and copper, saw a sharp rally in the spring. Like copper, silver peaked on May 20th and experienced a sharp decline, though not as severe as copper's drop. While silver and copper suffered throughout the summer, gold steadily continued to climb. Silver, like copper, bottomed on August 8th and has been staging an impressive recovery ever since. 
Silver's price movements are essentially a hybrid of both gold and copper's price trends. To test this theory, I average the prices of gold and copper, adjusting copper's price by multiplying it by 540 to prevent gold's higher price from exerting undue influence. Then I created a chart based on that adjusted average. Sure enough, the resulting chart bears a striking resemblance to silver's price chart. The five-year correlation of this average with silver stands at a solid 0.842, while the one-year correlation is an even more impressive 0.956. This is higher than the correlation between gold and silver, which is 0.771 over five years and 0.917 over the past year, and even stronger than the correlation between copper and silver, which is 0.725 over five years and 0.878 over the past year. This analysis highlights the importance of monitoring both gold and copper to gain a clearer understanding of silver's price movements. Interestingly, performing technical analysis on the chart of the copper gold average seems to be a useful tool for confirming and anticipating silver's price movements. Now that I've explained the importance of monitoring copper's price movements to better understand silver, I'll analyze copper. Copper's summer decline unfolded within a channel pattern, ultimately finding support at the key $4 level. Copper broke out of its channel pattern in late August and has since rebounded quite a bit. Copper's stabilization and rebound over the past month has allowed silver to find solid footing and stage an impressive recovery of its own. Right now, copper is in a confirmed uptrend that should continue creating a tailwind for silver. Along with bullish technicals, copper's fundamentals also point to a positive outlook. As the world increasingly embraces AI and green technologies such as electric vehicles, solar energy, and wind farms, demand for copper is expected to surge due to its essential role in wiring and other electrical applications. According to Jeff Curry, the Chief Strategy Officer of Energy Pathways at Carlisle, copper demand in the transport sector is expected to rise over 11-fold by 2050 thanks to electric vehicles that contain over a mile of copper wiring. In addition, demand for copper to expand the global electricity grid is expected to increase 4.8 times by 2050. By 2030, a copper supply gap nearing 10 million tons is forecasted. French billionaire commodities trader Pierre Andorand recently predicted that copper prices could soar to $40,000 per ton in the coming years, a more than fourfold increase from the current price. All of these factors should be bullish for silver as well. A technical analysis of silver itself shows that it has been consolidating under the key $32.50 resistance level for the past five months. I believe that a decisive close above that resistance level, which formed at the May high, will signal the start of the next leg in the bull market. For technical and fundamental reasons, I am very bullish on silver and wouldn't be surprised to see it hit $50 an ounce or greater in the course of this precious metals rally. In conclusion, the overlooked relationship between copper and silver plays a critical role in understanding silver's price movements alongside the more commonly recognized influence of gold. Investors should monitor copper closely as its future movements may signal the next major leg up in silver's bull market. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the subscribe button and like this video. Also, I recommend subscribing to my newsletter, The Bubble Bubble Report, where I discuss precious metals and global economic risks in even greater detail. To subscribe to this newsletter, click the link in the video description below. Once again, my name is Jesse Colombo, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.